I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here, and as for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. I think. She's a liar, liar, pants on fire. That's what I think. I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said. And fledgling artists don't lie. I mean, look at... Look at Bob Ross. He never lied. Ooh, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Last episode, we, um... Started our second trial of the second uh, chapter. And we spent a lot of that time, um, going over, like, how, you know, about the gas leak stuff, how that could have happened. Well, more specifically, you know, how the poison was, um, administered. And that led us to the whole gas leak thing, you know, that sham spear was blowing in the pipes to cause a gas leak in the, uh, the room next door. I don't know if it was next door, but, you know, the, uh, the room that Natsume was occupying. That led us to how we, how we think, you know the actual poisoning occurred, which was that a little bit was put on the ed end of the pipe that Shamsu was blowing into. And I, th I think the last thing, pretty much one of the last uh, re revelations we um, had was that, you know, who the only other person we knew of who had poison on them was Miss Green. So we had to um, call her to the stand and she's going to testify. But that seems likely, unless there's some other big twist. That's that's most likely what happened. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So, I also got some theories that I want to share with you. That I can just get my thoughts together and you know what I'm thinking. I also have kind of a far-fetched theory that I thought about that I want to share with you. That It actually ties back to the last game. So, but anyway, I'll start with the obvious ones. So, obviously we know Sham Spear, or we haven't, um... We've concluded anyway that Sham Spear, you know, did the thing with the pipe, caused the gas leak, yada yada yada. That's obviously what happened to Natsume because he was, you know, freaking out and he, he testified to that, right? That there was a gas leak. Uh, so it, it only makes sense that he did the same thing to uh, Duncan when he was staying in that room. And that's how he died, the same exact way, the gas leak. And so I believe that that would obviously um, give... Um, um, Miss Green a motive, right? Because she was, we know that she was in love with, uh, Duncan. I believe it was mutual. They were, I don't know if they were engaged. I forget the actual nature of their relationship, but they were passing love notes and stuff back and forth, so they were, they were into each other. And, uh, if Miss Green found out that Sham Spear killed, uh, Duncan, then she would, of course, want revenge. So I think that would, that would be her motive. That would make sense. I also still strongly think, I feel like the more the case has gone on, the more I strongly think that Sham Spear might be, uh, what's his face, uh, Selden, right? Like, I don't know, if not Selden, then somebody who, uh, who worked with him, maybe an accomplice or something, but, I don't know, it just makes sense to me that he would be, uh, Selden somehow. Um, the only thing that's tripping me up is the fact that, you know, he was found dead. So I don't know if there was some death fakery going on. Or something. I don't know. Has me a little puzzled. Um, but I don't know. It just makes sense. It would also make sense maybe why he's so charismatic and like dolled up in like this wig and stuff. Maybe to hide his appearance. That's my. That's what I'm going with. I'll go, I'll go with that. That <laughs> he's Selden, unless proven otherwise. Um, what else? Oh yeah. And then I guess I'll hit on my um, my out of the box theory, um, which is. So I remember the last case, it was a while ago since I played that, obviously. But I was thinking about it and how just, even at the time, I remember how kind of ridiculous and coincidental the series of events seemed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, to my knowledge, you had Miss Green who was happened to be walking past the Garadib's house. At the exact same time, upstairs, Mr. and Mrs. Garadib were having their little argument. Mrs. Garadib threw a knife. It missed Mr. Garadib. I think, if I remember correctly, didn't it like hit his... Didn't it, like, hit his pipe or something? I don't know. That part's not important. But it fell out the window. There was also a book outside that I think also fell out of the Garadib's house. Um, at that moment, she bent over, and the knife hit her in the back, and she... Well, she didn't die, but 
got badly injured. A lot of coincidences. So I was wondering if maybe we'll find out that it didn't happen that way and that Shanfield was involved from the start and he maybe made it look like an accident, but he actually tried to kill her. Because I don't remember if it was confirmed or not, but I, I'm pretty sure we know that, um, what's his face, that Mr. That Sham Spear, oh, sorry, that Miss Green was going to that pub. This, the, what was it called? The something sa slug and salad or something? So we know she was heading there, and I believe it was to meet Mr. Shamspear. And if that's the case, it would make sense. Maybe she confronted him and was like, I know you killed uh, my beloved Duncan. And so then he might have uh, gone after her to silence her before she alerted the police or before anybody else found out. So that would be interesting. I mean, this case already ties back to that case in a lot of ways, but that would be interesting. If everything we knew about the last case, case was turned on its head. That's about it though. I've been talking for a while. <laughs> I just want to get into it. This will probably be one recording. I'm recording a little bit earlier than I usually do. So I can probably do this one recording. And then it just it just depends how long the episode is. If I'm able to... Um, or sorry, how long the recording is. If I'm able to do it in one episode. Or I'm going to have to split it into two. We'll see. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get going. 23rd of February, 11.32 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Joyful, jubilant, jumping jacks! Okay, he's up... <laughs> Natsume is up to his usual shenanigans. Oh, Mr. Natsume, I'm so pleased for you. Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, and non-locum uh, judicial assistant, Miss Mikotova Esquires. Try saying that five times fast. Now, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent and proof that my tea is innocent. Ah, good morning, my dear fellows. It is I. Oh, he showed up. Oh, Herlock Sholmes. May you drink my tepid tea and fall forever silent. No, no, not to me. Don't threaten to poison him. That's what got you into this mess. <laughs> is, that a, is that a confession? I thought the tea was innocent. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you came! How wonderful! I didn't think you were gonna come, like, at all, but... Please save your derision! I know what you're all thinking! That I'm useless! Uh, kinda. Good morning, he says. When it's very nearly time for my luncheon! Your scorn is ring clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought anything of the sort. Well... Maybe I was thinking it a little bit. The truth is, I was determined that today would be the day would be the day, as sleep seduced me last night, I thought. Tomorrow, for once, I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my companions. Yay. Such spirited determination has a beauty all of its own, does it not? Sure. Oh, yes! Marry me! I mean, what? And then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep, I queried. Why, time after time, do they make the same foolish blunder? And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightedly simple. People oversleep. Because they sleep. Oh, I'm so smart. Well, then not an astute, in astute insight into the matter? Sure. Oh, yes. Uh, whatever you say. Upon which realization I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a wink all night. And the results? By first light, I was exhausted. And began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. I could have told you that would happen. <laughs> and so, the conclusion of last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. You don't say. Yes, I think most of us probably knew that already. We didn't need to uh, do an experiment to figure that out. What others presuppose, I prove by experimentation. That, my dear fellow, is the scientific method. Ah, oh, yes, and one more thing. One more thing. Do you remember this? Ah, that is the... Oh, that's the... Is that the... Oh, that's the poison. Right, right, right. I, I was thinking it had to do with the, uh, the experiment. The, uh, you know, his goggles or whatever. Yes, of course, it's the poison that Miss Green was about to drink at the hospital yesterday. Oh, you didn't manage to... It was a laborious talk as the battle was near empty. But such inconveniences do not hinder Sholmes. Ha ha! 
I must confirm that it contains Strike 9. So I was right. Yeah, boy. Boy. Perhaps, though, of course, that circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now. By licking the inside of the neck is not recommended. You might die. Aha. Uh -huh. The bottle of poison, a bottle found in the possession of Miss Green, with traces of the slow-acting poison Strike 9 inside. That'll be most helpful. Uh, who's that? Ah, could I have a word? I don't know who that is. Ah, Gregson, of course. Gregson, my BFF, how good of you to come. Shut up and listen. Forget it. Excuse me. Wait a minute, Inspector. What do you want? Oh, I, um, don't wish to make a nuisance of myself. From the look on your face, I'd say it's someone else who you think is making a nuisance of himself. Who could that be, my dear fellow? My dear Inspector, please, speak freely. Pretend that I'm not here. Believe me, I could do that. Life would be a whole lot simpler for me. Do you have the results, Inspector, of the investigation of Mr. Shamsphere's room? Not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. Now I'm here about something else. The dead convict, actually. Oh, you mean... The man from this news of the article we discovered yesterday in Mr. Shamsphere's room? A man by the name of... Ah, yes. Selden. Selden Cooper. I went through the archives at the yard and dug out the, the fellow's file. There's something in there that... Well, it caught me eye. Let's see it then. Something caught your eye? What, Inspector? What? Tell me! I've, co I've copied out the relevant parts for you. Say so you can read it for yourselves. Thank you. Okay, I'll definitely do that. The capital offender's file has been entered into the court record. Scotland Yard's file about the convicted criminal Selden that includes the newspaper article about him dying of illness in prison. Okay, let's... Actually, I didn't look at the poison yet either, right? Anything to report? Anything to look at? I guess just the bottom. So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strike nine. There are a few remnants on the bottom of the bottle here. Look. You mustn't be tempted to try it. Don't do it. You have, you have too much to live for. Of course not. <laughs> as long as we don't lose this trial. Otherwise I'll end it all. No. Even if we lose the trial. Don't do it! No, we mustn't lose the trial in the first place, Mr. Narahodo. Make your mind up, Suzuno-san. She's right, though. Your life is too precious, Narahodo. Okay, I think... Is that it? Okay. Investigative findings related to Selden. Okay. 18 counts of burglary. 6 counts of suspected murder. Died of natural causes whilst in prison. His final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. Oh, that's right. Okay, what if... Okay, I'm thinking maybe... That could be. It could be that since they're pointing it out... And I feel like they might have pointed it out earlier even. That he had a cellmate. So... I don't know. That, that kind of makes a bit more sense. That maybe it's the, Selden is the cellmate. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains unrec... Ah, there we go. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains uncovered. Okay, now... Now that makes a lot of sense, actually. I'm pretty sure then... Selden's probably the, the roommate, or the cellmate. Uh, um, I'm sorry, this... Sorry. Shamspear is the cellmate of Selden. And, and um, he's after the 1,000 pounds worth of loot. In fact, he might suspect, or maybe he knows, that it's hidden in... You know, uh, Shamspear's old... Uh, Sorry, the room that he wanted, not Tomei's room. I'm getting all my characters mixed up. Mixed up. My apologies. Um, yeah, that would make sense. So that's why he, that's why uh, Shamsu was so interested in getting that room, because maybe the loot is hidden in there. What else we got? Condemned criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester's Strange Ways Prison announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in the early hours this morning. I think this is the same thing in the other piece of evidence. He had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead. Yeah, see, it says it right there. Fellow cellmate. Before his uh, capital punishment could be carried out. Okay. 
Okay, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in that theory that I just said. These documents include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in Mr. Shamsbeer's room. I'll rearrange everything in the court record so we don't have duplicate information. Ah, there we go. She's probably getting rid of the other piece of evidence. Why are you giving us a copy of this important file, though? Well, you're the ones who turned up the clue in the first place, aren't you? I'm just making sure the thing gets handled in the proper fashion. Oh, Scotland Yard's workings are so wonderful. Indeed, my dear fellows, and the inspector here is a shining diamond in its crown. Give me a hug. Get off me. A shining diamond in the rough, maybe. Look, I just don't want to be beholden to a lawyer, that's all. Fair enough. As he, uh... As he evaporates. <laughs> Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Court proceedings are about to resume. Make our way into the courtroom at once. Here we go. The moment of truth. Well, I shall leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not not enough at all. Certainly not. Haha. <laughs> no, sirree. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. I'm rather tired of seeing Mr. Mustache and floods of tears, personally, so the best of luck to you. Welcome, student Mr. Navajo Esquire. Yes, Mr. Natsume? It's... it's time, isn't it? Yes. This is it. Miss Olive Green and Mr. William Shamspear. This is going to be the final battle. The final boss. I won't really have saved Sozuki-san. Until I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. But it's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Ryanosuke. You have to. You got this. I have faith in you. 23rd of February, 12.30 p.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. Our wonderful jury is in place. Our wonderful prosecutor is in his usual spot. Drinking his grape juice. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again now. Before the recess, we heard a most startling accusation from the defense. Namely, that the victim of the case we heard here only a few days ago is the true perpetrator of this incident. A reckless, rash, and prejudiced charge of wrongdoing, in my opinion, my lord. However, the prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from dubious eastern shores. Thank you! for that backhanded consideration. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly have called that a compliment. Rather cool the assessment from the Honorable British Prosecutor, I must say. So, Lord Van Zykes, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Of course, my lord. Ready and waiting in the witness's antechamber, my lord. Very well, Bailiff, bring the witness in. It is I. Witness, I state your names and occupation for the court, please. William Shamspear, my liege. My, for mine occupation, I can say only that I be a tragic victim. Yeah, right. To be pitied. I'm certainly not a murderer or anything. Currently unemployed, in other words. I'm Olive Green. I'm a fledgling artist. Well, no. Not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure who's too weak-spirited to admit she had no talent, I suppose. <laughs> also currently unemployed, in other words. You people are pathetic. What a coterie. Coterie? Mr. Shamspear? My lord, I am thy humble servant. Okay, shut up and listen. I'm afraid that you are no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility has been raised that you are in fact the assailant. Intent on taking the life of your fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for naught else, my lord. And Miss Green. What do you want? I'm painting. I mean, yes. You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Yes. The officer did explain. 
He said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. That he did. Thank you for that visual cue. And do you accept the charge, Miss Queen? Of course not. I don't know anything about any poisoning. And I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady. Die to live. And live to die. Verily, I know not thy prickly pea pigmented personage. You call me you call me fat. Very well, let us proceed with the matter at hand. That being to ascertain whether or not Miss Green has any involvement in this affair. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? Oh, I don't know. I barely ever go to the East End anyway. It so happens that I passed by that neighborhood six days ago, that's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in hospital, fighting for my life. Yes, having been unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street outside the Gerritive household. Yes, that incident. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife, through no fault of my own, and now I'm under suspicion. I still wonder if uh, Sham Spear was involved in that incident. In some way. What other relevant things might I be suspected of? It's all... Excuse me, it's all very disturbing. Hmm. Your energies may be better spent worrying about random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. At this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Mr. Shamsbeer's lodgings is the Briar Road incident of six days ago. That's why... We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happened. Oh no! The incident six days ago? You... You mean you want me to relieve that awful incident? accident? Yes. Yes, I do. Unfortunately, yes. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we will be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. Yeah, but, what, but what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Hmm, we'll see about that. I'll be the judge of that. Or I guess the judge will be the judge of that. Let us proceed then. The witnesses will present their formal testimony to the court. On the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road the evening of the 17th of February. The evening of the 17th of February. It was six days ago at about 5 p.m. I was walking along in the snow and I was suddenly stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case have their lodgings. I was at the tavern on the eve of which thou speakest. For I had bespoke my supper. It was the first time I'd been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Anyway, I was administrated to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all of this business. Hmm. We know what that matter she's talking about has to do with. Yes, a second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. What a quinky dink. One can only presume this is the most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you are not in your room, Mr. Shamspear. Twas the following morn when I did awaken that I learned of the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of the law make on the floor above mine. Masoski son was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. That, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> I suspect that there's nothing connecting these two witnesses but happenstance. It's true, it does seem as though they're unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. We might be on the same page, Ryanosuke. There's something lurking in the shadows here. I feel certain of it. And this is my one and only chance to expose it. Counsel, you may now course examine these two witnesses if you wish. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, my lord. Just my idea of a little joke. Let's do this. The evening of the 17th of February. Okay, it was six days ago at about 5 p.m. I was walking along in the snow and I was suddenly stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case have their lodgings. Okay. 
I was at the tavern on the eve of which thou speakest, for I had bespoke my supper. I, it was the first time I've been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Okay. Should I press him on this? For a tavern, you say? Which one? Twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. Tis a jewel in the east end. I see. And a little unexpected, I feel. Hmm? Huh? Say that to my face! I mean, what? What do you mean, Lord Van Zykes? The slug and salad offers are usually fine dining. For the lo locality, at least. Not an establishment you expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. Ah, okay, so it's like a... An upper crusty restaurant, and Shamshir is supposed to be kinda on the poor side. That is odd. But again, we know what this has to do with. It's true, the menu lists premium crusts of bread and glasses of water and different levels of cloudiness. I would have expected Grub's Grubbery in the local vicinity to be more appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas. Mmm, sounds delicious. Or rather, soupy water and pea like mush. All equally appetizing. I... I just want to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? <laughs> how different can water really be? Yeah, last time I checked, I don't go to a restaurant to see uh, how the water is. Or perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. A, speci a specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. The fact that on that day of all days he dined at a place he wouldn't normally, it does stand out. So, Mr. Shakespeare's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if we have some evidence that can explain those actions. Uh, let me see. I feel like we do, right? Maybe not, because, um... Whatchamacallit. We, uh, Miss Green just testified that, you know, that she went to the... Or that she was on her way to the uh, this pub. I don't think we have evidence of that yet. Yeah, let's, I'll say not yet. I wish we did, but sadly I can't think of anything at the moment. If we find a clue that could explain why Mr. Uh, Mr. Shamsfield went there, we must present it to the court. Yes, absolutely, positively. If that is all on this matter, Council, I would ask Miss Green to reiterate her next statement. Okay, I'm gonna press her on this. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It was nothing really. It's not worth mentioning. Now why'd you bring it up? <laughs> if you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Okay, there we go, we're bringing it up. Ah! Oh! It was related to the card you were holding. Yeah, she, she quickly hid behind her back. Oh. oh, nothing. Don't mind me. What was that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. From memory, I believe the card contained a note that read, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Well, what does that matter? This had nothing to do with Duncan. Aha! Got something to say, uh, Mr. Shamspear? Excuse me. Pardon me, good sir. Slam! Mr. Shamspear, do you have something to share with the court? No, I just saw a fly. To be or not to be, that is the question. Ah, oh, pray forgive me. The great bard's words springeth from within me with ne'er a thought. Don't tell me. It's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? <laughs> Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance, perhaps? Eh, um, well. Nay, nay, sire. Twas nothing at all. Right. You lying piece of crap! I mean, presumably you know the name, though. Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. 
I think I called them Ross Duncan before. I keep, I keep getting it out of reverse. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. I would it were so, but sadly nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. <laughs> My bedfellows. Uh, beg your pardon? So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours? That's right. Why are you lying to me? Hmm, Miss Green? Me, my lord? Have I done something wrong? The card that was mentioned before containing the note. Do you have it upon your person? I do, yes. But I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should throw it away, really. It's evidence. Give it here. Before you dispose of it, the court will take it as evidence, please. Aha. This is exactly what we need. A note in an envelope that seems to have been ripped open rather roughly. It contains instructions to meet with someone who claims to have information about Duncan Ross. Of course, that's what links Mr. Shamsby and Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. Aha! Exactly as I said. Now continue with your testimony, please, Miss Green. Okay. I guess let's take a look at it first. Okay, I don't want to present it. I just want to look at it. The envelope has been ripped open rather carelessly, hasn't it? Oh yeah, the, of course, that's the, uh... The whatchamacallit. That's the piece of envelope that we already have. Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that. Ah! What is it? The way the envelope is torn. I'm almost sure I've seen the exact same shape somewhere else. You're just imagining it. Oh wait! You don't mean... Were you thinking of this piece of evidence, Mr. Naruhoto? Exactly, that's it. Try to match them up. Like a puzzle. Perfect match. They go together perfectly. This torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs with this card. Okay, I know in an envelope that seems to have been r ripped open rather roughly. The envelope fits perfectly with a torn off piece found at the scene of the crime. A piece of envelope that was found in Mr. Shanspear's room. It fits perfectly with an envelope in Miss Green's possession. Okay, that's quite the find. I think that is that it. I think so. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's the piece of evidence we needed against him. Right? Oh, I was about to present it, but no, I think we have to we have to go through this and then select present evidence. Let's go, let's do it. Present the evidence. Mr. Shamspear? Yeah. Yes, sire. On the day in question, is it not the case that you visited the Slug and Salad? A place you don't normally patronize? For a very particular reason? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Pray, if thou hast some purpose, speakest. Speakest while I do my Shamspear dance. Very well, I will present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the Slug and Salad that day. Namely, this letter. <laughs> Watch, I'm wrong. I believe, oh, this card reveals the answer. The music didn't cut out right away, so I actually was nervous that I did mess up. <laughs> I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. I believe this card reveals the answer. Good lord, Miss Green's card, you mean? That's right, my lord. It reads, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Nothing suspicious about that whatsoever. Mr. Shamspear, your actions on the afternoon of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. Ah! Personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamspear? Um, well... Ha! Excuse me, can I say something? Go ahead. Yes, Miss Green? That card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this old man, does it? Lies! Well, well you think so, yes. 
but it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? But we, but we found the piece of the envelope in his room. So he... It obviously had to do with him. May you what, Miss Green? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Very well then, you may amend your testimony to conclude details about the peculiar note. This note was delivered to me at my address. It has nothing to do with the odd man next to me here. Okay. I don't... I assume it's just the uh, the other piece of the envelope, but let me press her first. Hold it! Hold it! I think you said that you received it the day before the incident, didn't you? Yes, that's right! There appears to be no indication of the sender's name or address on the envelope. It was in my letterbox, that's all I know, I'm afraid. I have no idea who sent it. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Who is this Duncan Ross, please? A friend of mine. <laughs> my And my lover. He attended the same art school as I do. He, he passed away in a tragic accident a month ago. I go now, though. I wasn't sure what to make of that note, to be honest. But in the end, I decided to go. So you found out what the information was. That's right, because he was stabbed. On her way there, right? Of course I didn't. You're not thinking straight. Whilst on her way there, she was stabbed in the back. As my learned friend hopefully remembers. Uh, of course I do. Ah, yes, of course. She never made it to the meeting. Suspicious. Oh, Mr. Narahodo, you pursued Mr. Shanspear wonderfully there. It's worked out well, hasn't it? We have a new clue at last. Alright, now I need to pull off a really insightful objection somewhere. Well, as you've managed to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Ah, yes, of course. I got you. And yelling out objection isn't nearly the best way to do that, I suppose. I don't know, it's fun though. Objection! 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 Sorry. So I think that's all I gotta do then, right? She's saying, deliver to her address had nothing to do with him. But, we have this, which I found in Mr. Shamsphere's room, so. Let's have at it! Objection. Objection! The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. Sorry, I had to pause for a moment. There was a, uh, a plane flying overhead. And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in hospital. One thing I've noticed that I never commented on, at least I don't think I have, is it's weird how they... Is that like a phrase, in hospital, instead of like, in, in the hospital? Like, that's how I would say it. But they always say, specifically that phrase, they say, like, just, in hospital. I don't know, maybe that's a thing. I don't know if that's, like, a British way of saying it, or if it's just an old-timey way of saying it. Yes, I did. It's terrible if you think this happened to me. Yes, it is terrible. If it's all true, that is. Dun-dun-dun! Ooh. Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn-off end of an envelope. Oh, is it? And it so happened that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. What? Where'd you find that? In Mr. Shamsphere's room. Eh, uh, in... in my room? What, what a quinky dink Mr. Shamsphere. Do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, no. Well... Your action that afternoon follow the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. He, they, they did it again there. On 17th instead of on the 17th. Well, I think it's, and I think they also say like instead of the 17th of February, they say 17th February. I don't know, it's just something I noticed. So, so, so that's exactly where you went. Oh, poo. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamspear. You already knew about this note, didn't you? Uh, I can't hear you. He's... He's shrinking into himself now. And you, Miss Green. 
Oh, what did I do? As this torn off end of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamsphere's room. So how is it that it came to be in your possession? I I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist, after all. Lies! There is only one explanation. You broke into Mr. Shamsphere's room and stole it. Ah. You did what? Sorry. Thou hast what? You broke, I mean, thou, thou were in my room. What on earth? What do you want with me? Who do you work for? <laughs> if I just ignore him, I'll go away. It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. Er, uh, this sucks. They're both sweating now. Miss Green. Yes. Whilst we have the court's sympathy for sure for the suffering you have endured in recent events, anyone found to be given false testimony in a court of law will be duly punished. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Hmm. What are you hiding from us? Very well then, witnesses. You will give formal testimony again now. On the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. Okay. I should have eaten before this because I'm getting hungry and I have my stomach's grumbly, growling. The anomaly of the note. I do remember now, it was a week ago, per adventure, that note was delivered unto me. On the day writ therein, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad. Yet nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening I shared the company of the Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here, and as for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. I think. She's a liar, liar, pants on fire. That's what I think. Hmm. You now claim to have received this letter, do you, Mr. Shamspear? Faith, tis so, my lord. And I would swear to have set it upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I have not laid eyes upon it. Hmm. Well, that being the case, young lady, it would appear that your testimony was... A lie? Is that what you think? How unfair of you to think I'm the one lying. I mean... You were quite lying, that's why we think you're a liar. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said. And fledgling artists don't lie. I mean, look at... Look at Bob Ross. He never lied. That note was delivered to me at my address. Besides... We all know who the liar around here is. I think you're both lying. If that's true, Miss Green, how do you explain the facts? This part of the envelope was, without question, found in Mr. Shamsphere's room. I don't see why I should explain. Sorry? That's short for, I have no, uh, rebuttal. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm a friendly artist. My job here is to say that I... What happened, that's all. It's your job to give the explanations and the proofs. You, the fledgling lawyer. The fledgling will do his best. <laughs> Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Well, counsel? I'm ready, my lord. Very well, then. The defense will now proceed with the cross-examination of the witnesses. Miss Green clearly did break into Mr. Shamsphere's room. There can be no question of that. And that's how she acquired the note. Yes. Two facts that are starting to lead me to a possible explanation for all of this. And it's not a pretty one. Let's see where this goes. The anomaly of the note. I do remember now, it was a week ago, per adventure, the note was delivered unto me. Okay, so he's saying it was delivered to him now. On the day writ therein, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad, yet nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening I shared the company of the Japanese fellow, I did see the note had vanished. 
But I didn't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here. And as for that torn off piece of the envelope, I don't know anything about it. Okay. Let's see, who should I press first? Let's start with this one. So even after waiting for an hour, nobody appeared? Well, um, yes, sire. Tis as thou, thou sayest. Sayest. Really? You paused for a moment before you answered. In truth, when thou asked whether no nobody appeared, I did suddenly recall. Really? Do you mean to tell the court that somebody did appear after all? Who would that be? I was not alone that night at the slug and salad, my lord. No, tis returning to me now. I did treat my lips to almost clear water, and mine innards to a premium crust of bread. Okay. And all around me danced a great many companions. What do you mean? Fly, sire, flies. Good lord. Okay, that's not very helpful. In the name of Beelzebub, what were they? Fairies, perchance from a midsummer night's dream, come to taunt me. <laughs> it's Titania. She's guilt she's the killer. I think they were just flies. I can't help thinking that the flies ought to choose something more wholesome to buzz around. Is that wrong of me? Nah, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> okay. You saw the note had vanished. When exactly did you notice that it had gone missing? Such idle thoughts ne'er occupy my mind. I am busied with greater ideas. In other words, you didn't notice. Several days passed between your outing to the tavern and Mr. Natsume's visit to your room. Yes, it would appear that the notice appeared sometime in that interval. So idle thoughts ne'er occupy my mind. I am busied with greater ideas. And yet, during that time, Miss Green was comatose in hospital, was she not? Clearly, then, she could not have been stealing things from Mr. Shamspear's room. Oh, yes, of course. It's, it's all some sort of misunderstanding, isn't it, Mr. Prosecutor, sir? I'm the one asking the questions here. You have so far failed to give a satisfactory explanation as to how you came by the note. Ah! I am not here to advocate for your defense, madam. I won't tolerate inconsistencies in your story. You would do well to remember that. Oh, dearie me! Ha! Got her! What's the only thing getting at? He's not ready. He's not taking crap from nobody. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room? I don't know. Why would you? To get that letter. It seems that this note was actually delivered to Mr. Shamspear Shams about one week ago. Oh, does it? But for some reason, it ended up in your possession. I can't think of any way that could have happened. Ex exp uh, blah, blah, blah. Have happened except for you breaking into Mr. Mr. Shamspear's lodgings. Objection! Objection! But for what reason would the witness have done that? I, I, I um, don't know. I won't deny that Miss Green's possession of the note would appear to defy logic. However, until and unless her involvement in this case can be proven in some other way. Any further pursuit of this note is meaningless. Miss Green could only have come to be in possession of the note by stealing it from Mr. Shamspear's room. Yes, that's a fact. And yet, there's no obvious reason why she would have done such a thing. What if there was some other reason she broke into his lodgings, though? Yes, we should pursue that idea, Mr. Narahodo. We're close now. I can feel it. We're so close to a breakthrough. The only other reason I can think of, and obviously we, we already went down this line of questioning, was uh, the poison, right? The poison, the uh, the thingy magic of the pipe. I mean, we have the poison. Is that enough? 
Yeah, because it's the same poison. I don't know if I have to keep pressing. I mean, it was very clear that I have to press, I have to present something. It's always a matter of whether I have the piece of evidence I need. Like, for example, we didn't get this piece of evidence until we, you know, pre pressed, I think it was Miss Green. Since, you know, we pressed her on something and she gave it to us. I'm gonna go for it. Let's go for the poison. Because I think that's very clearly the, the other reason, the main reason she went there. Objection. Yeah, baby. Yesterday at the hospital, we saw you with this bottle. And though the contents spilt during the course of your meeting, our meeting, a small quantity do, da, 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 a small quantity remained. That's how you say that word. Ah! Oh, that's right. According to the defense's independent analysis, Mr. Schwartz's chemistry set, <laughs> the liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as strike nine, which so happened to be the poison that Mr. Shakespeare uh, drank. So, quinky dink, I think not. What, strike nine? The very same poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear. The very same. Ah! Miss Green, you broke into this man's lodgings. For one reason, and one reason alone. To cover the end of the pipe that feeds the gas lamp in Mr. Shamspear's room with poison. 